Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees, and all of this alongside our full-time jobs. One thing I do have to sort out before I start putting the posts in and uh, getting the siding up is uh, I've got these posts, these steel, the steel frame totally plumb and then took the bracing off and then went up onto the roof and did all the roof. Of course, me moving about on the roof took them out of plumb slightly. I mean, I'm talking 0.3 of a degree, but I'm not happy with that. So um, I've placed this brace in and I'll show you that now. Um, I'm going to leave that brace in until I finish putting all the posts in and probably the front of this siding here that will brace it, the, the sheer bracing. Okay, it's time to set out the first post, which is this corner post here. But one good thing that not many, uh, I've not really seen a lot of people using it, is the plumb part of it. So this little red dot here is from the base of the laser, but there's also one on the top of the laser. And that goes up to the top of the, the corner of this uh, post. So that point there is exactly that point there on the floor and that really helps at the end of that uh, eye beam which comes down from there is exactly plumb and 90 degrees back in the workshop oh just spent ages on a little footstool trying to measure everything up on site for this post and how it's going to fit into the top of the roof. So I've come back here and I've uh, I've put together a um, two scale model. This is the drawing. So here is the I beam. There's the post. So that I've got to try and fit in, sort of around this post. Then there's this Z bracket here, which the roof sits on, and a small tab here, which is bolted onto the I beam. Well, this is welded here, and then these are bolted. So what I've done, I've created my I-beam, which is 165 mil. This is the plumb 90 degrees at 14 and a half degrees. And then there's my, um, my tab, 150 mil it is from there, welded, but this is my, my wooden model. And there's the Z-bracket, which I've just cut a slither off. Um, and that, that will allow me now to... Um, just to work out all the maths. <laughs> I prefer a scale model or a real model that I can uh, actually sort of draw around and play around with. So uh, I'm going to carry on with that, making some sort of angled wedges here so I can follow the wood up here and attach it into this sort of um, wedge. Same on this other side as well, because I want to encapsulate this as if it was a 90 degree beam that way. So everything's going to be plumb that way. Well, this is uh, quite complicated. Um, I've just done a mock-up, so uh, I've cut some wedges, which are uh, mark one, mark two, this type of thing. Um, that sits inside this Z uh, bar, or Z, um, they're purlins. Um, because all this is at an angle, but I want the beam to look like it's plumb and square. That's sort of what it's going to look like. Uh, I've just got to take a little smidge off this one because uh, this isn't square here. But the other, I don't know if you can see it in there. The other um, wedge is the cutoff of that one. So it actually works perfect. And this is then 10 centimeters at the bottom to make it look like a 10 centimeter uh, beam. The only trouble is I was going to think I was thinking about mitering these so it would look like one beam. But I think the length of these, because they're going to be over four meters long, I think my mitering might be a bit weak. And once there's plenty of finishing and paint or whatever on these, it should uh, it should blend in. But they're, it's all going to be under the garage anyway. So um, that's the plan to box in these beams. 
And I need to do that first before I put the post in because these will uh, sort of nudge up against the post. So now I've done my, uh, my test piece, which I uh, went down the plot to just to try out on the metal beam and it worked fine. I had to trim a little bit off one of the wedges, but um, I've come back to the workshop now just because it's it was too cold. I couldn't feel my fingers after a few minutes down there. So uh, I've trimmed some of the boards that Julie sanded and uh, varnished the other day, and I'm gonna do it in two sections. Um, it's a total of just under five meters. So I'm, gonna, I'm making these up to two meters 60, and then hopefully they'll join in the middle where one of the big posts is coming up. So it will look like a proper beam joint in the center. So um, I've got my spacing. Um, it's uh, 68 millimeters. That's when I've trimmed this small one off here. So uh, I'm gonna glue this up both sides, place it in. And then I'm going to have a tiny little lip, um, probably a millimetre or so, and that will be enough for me to plane both edges flat with this bottom side here. I'm hoping we can uh, get away with any sort of noticeable joint. There will be. And then I'm going to pin it. Now, yesterday when I did my test piece, I was pinning with 18 gauge nails. And um, as you can see here, the grain of this Douglas fir is, is quite abrupt and the 18 gauge went straight in but then just followed the grain and went right off at an angle so I've tried it with some 16 gauge and they seem a bit stronger so I'm going to give it a go on this one hopefully it'll be fine I don't want to start screwing it even the glue doesn't like the cold weather Ugh. Nope. I've got no choice other than to nail it. And as you just saw, it's still following the grain. So what I'll do, I'll nail it a bit further in. So it still follows the grain, but it will still make contact with this other board. It's really just to hold it for while the glue glue goes off. So if I come down a centimeter or so, that seems to work fine. Right, I had a bit of a bit of a job nailing this. I had to uh, trial and error a little bit, but um, I'm going to leave that all glued up now and clamped. Um, I've tapped down various places where the nails did come through. There's only about three instances, but um, oh, it's so annoying. I even tried a much heftier nail with my bigger gun, and uh, oh, as you can see. That even followed the grain as well there, yeah. and also cracked the side, which I'm not too happy about, but I have oversized these, so I can just trim that end off. So uh, this is the first of two, so I'll practice on this one, and then hopefully, for well, the second one, it'll be all good.
going to warm up my uh, my wood putty. Everything in this garage is so cold. My silly little dog is still hoping something is going to come out of the drain. And now just a little bit of wood filler just to, for the gaps where I couldn't didn't have enough clamps really to get it a really good joint. It's near enough the right colour. On the other one I've just done it's uh, come out okay. So I'm just going to go up and down this filling in the tiny little gaps Give it a few hours, come back and sand it down. And now the last touch is just to take the corners off. And a couple of coats of varnish on and hopefully this one will be ready to get to the plot and I can get those posts up. Nearly looks like a beam. If you squint your eyes and don't look at it too closely I'm hoping that when it's slotted over <laughs> the metal eye beam, that should look like a proper beam. Good morning, back on site. We've got a break in the weather, a break in the freezing cold weather. It's risen up to uh, zero degrees this morning but i'm hoping the sun will pop out to warm things up a bit we are going to get these false beams you saw me um putting together in the workshop over the last couple of days so uh lots of uh, hopefully all the maths have been done and uh, the calculations um i'm going to uh, measure up the center post and then after that put in the uh, the, the wedges for the false beams and then the corner post so uh, all good fun but uh Let's go. I had this bracket made up. It wasn't part of the kit, but I had it to match the other posts um, and it, it's just not working. So what I'm going to do, take it back to the workshop. I'm going to cut it here, cut it here, and then weld that on. So that is um, parallel to the ground. We've just been and collected the false beams Ian's made and he's just behind me now measuring the ends just to trim them up and we're going to get on and fit them. Well, fit one, let's see how we do. Ian's just changed his blade. We've just been and bought a new blade and uh-oh, I don't think it likes it. It's on the wrong way round, even though all the flipping lettering is on there. Is it back to front? Well, it is a Bosch one, so on a Makita. Ah! What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I can There's... do it here, I've got everything. Today has been the day of lots of A, B, C, D. I think we're working our way through the alphabet of all our... No, I'm not doing it like this, I'm going to do it like that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway. I blame it on the cold. Mm. 
when we first got here this morning it was way too cold to be up here we just ice cream forehead we couldn't feel our fingers well we could they were burning but the sun's out this afternoon so hopefully Ian gets his blade on right we'll get this beep this false beam up take two oh. <laughs> We said today was a weird day. What I've just done there is just take out this tiny little uh, groove and that will fit just on there hopefully. Just marking all um, the little wooden noggins Ian's put in either side, just as a, a reference for ourselves when we come to put this beam up so we know where they are for the final fixings. And then we'll, he's doing it with a pen on the inside, and then we're just going to flip around to the external side of this metal beam and do it with masking tape. That wouldn't have stuck on this morning at all, would it, Ian? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. But as soon as that sun comes out, it's lovely here. Yeah. Oh, it's... It's, a it's just, wind. yeah. Like, like, we get some walls. I know. Walls <laughs> Are you all right if I just nudge my... I've got a nudge them forward. I'll just place them. Go right on the edge. Yeah, I'm on the edge. Hold on, no, no, no. I don't want to push. Alright. So. I'm not in a good spot. Okay. It's because the back of me is prizing out a little bit. Let's see. Um, How's that in line with the bolts? It's right in line with that. Uh, Halfway? Yeah. Right. Can we take them out a minute? Okay, drop it. Um, I think I'm better if my legs are sideways. Yeah, well. So let's get down a sec. Yeah. So take this off. Yeah. So now I'm going to trim this. Oh, so did it come down to that centre line? Yeah. This cut is for the metal bracket, half of the metal bracket, five centimetres.
no, it's fine. That's as high as it's going to go. This side you oh, can see okay. the gap, you see. All right. Aesthetically, this is going to look so much nicer. That won't go anywhere. Let go. Let go. I want to see. Ooh. Trouble is, now we've got the sun directly on us. Oh, that looks smart. Yeah, that looks smart inside. Oh, that's much better. Yeah. So, so that is ten and a half. Ten and a half. Okay. Right, so I'm going to drill a wood hole first until I get to the metal, and then I'm going to go to my metal drill. Metal. Swap back to my wood, hopefully. And go through the hole. Okay, wood drill and then stick to the metal drill. That seems to work fine. My clamp. <laughs> I decided to go with a long bar and cut it down, uh, basically because I couldn't find any um, bolts appropriate for this type of install. Probably isn't another type of install like this. So um, I've cut these down to length and I'm putting these rounded nuts on the end. So I've cut these down to the exact length. A large washer has to cover up any sort of breakout from the drill, but also a nice solid platform against this thin siding wood. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have four of these per these beams. And this in future, when we decide maybe we're gonna put a rail on the outside or something like that, I can take these out, extend the bolts and bolt that piece of wood onto the side. So that's the thought about it. So let me get these in. It is definitely a nice tight fit. done we're losing light we decided to do the other two just because we had everything out and it's uh that's it one right. section done look at the sky oh it's fantastic tonight we're back the next morning well just after lunchtime because we prefer this nice sun coming down onto us instead of freezing to death in the shadow but I've got my bracket that I weathered up yesterday. So um, here comes the point where I find out whether that angle is correct. And I've got to put this on before the next beam because I won't be able to get access to the bolts at the back. Oh, looks pretty good. I won't know until uh, I put a level on it, but uh, let's get this bolted on.
Well, we're gonna leave it there for this video, um, just because I didn't realize how long these false beams were gonna take. I thought I'd just be able to cut them, glue them together and whack them up there. But with all these different angles on these uh, Z brackets, the purlins, oh, it was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a couple of issues. I've got a little bit just here, I've got to re-glue because it was on a weak point and uh, it just split away. The glue didn't hold it enough. And because of those uh, brad nails going at a funny angle, it wasn't a very good fixing. So um, that's, that's simple enough. And I've got one more bolt to cut and put that in. But once that's done, we're going to be ready for the posts. Yep, yeah, we're all excited about getting these posts up in position. So that will be in the next video. Too much for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so again, if you like these videos, Cheeky the thumbs, thumbs up. up. And uh, hit that subscribe. And uh, we will see you in the next one. Hopefully it'll be sunny then too. Bye.